This recording will go over anal rectal abscess, anal fissure, and anal fistula, as well as parasitic infection. Anal rectal abscess is a localized area of induration and pus caused by inflammation of the soft tissue near the rectum or anus. It is most often the result of obstruction of the ducts of the glands in the anal rectal region. Rectal pain is often the first symptom. There may be no other signs or symptoms at first, but local swelling, redness, and tenderness are present within a few days after the onset of pain. If the abscess becomes chronic, discharge, bleeding, and pruritus may occur. Fever occurs if larger abscesses are present. Anorectal abscesses are managed by surgical IND, which is incision and drainage. The, phys the physician can often excise simple perianal and ischiorectal abscesses using local anesthetic. For patients with a more extensive abscess, a regional or general anesthetic may be needed. Systemic antibiotics are given only for patients who are immunocompromised, have diabetes, have valvular disease, or a prosthetic valve, or are obese. For patients with an anal rectal abscess, nursing interventions are focused on comfort and helping the patient maintain optimal perineal hygiene. Encourage the use of warm sitz baths, analgesics, bulk producing agents, and stool softeners after the surgery to promote healing. Stress the importance of good perineal hygiene after all bowel movements and the maintenance of a regular bowel pattern with a high fiber diet. An anal fissure is a tear in the anal lining which can be very painful. Small fissures occur with straining to have a stool such as with diarrhea or constipation. Larger, deeper fissures may occur as a result of another disorder such as Crohn's disease, or from trauma, such as a foreign body, anal intercourse, or perirectal surgery. An acute anal fissure is superficial and usually resolves on its own or heals with conservative treatment. It can take up to six weeks for a fissure to heal. Chronic fissure re recur and surgical treatment may be needed. Pain during and after, after defecation and bright red blood in the stool are the most common symptoms. Other manifestations include pruritus, urinary frequency or retention, dysuria, and dysperiunia. The diagnosis is made by stretching and inspecting the perianal skin. Management of, acute, of an acute fissure is usually aimed at local pain relief and softening of stools to reduce trauma to the area. Teach the patient to use warm sitz bath, analgesics, and bulk producing agents such as psyllium to help minimize the pain with defecation. Topical anti-inflammatory agents such as hydrocortisone creams and suppositories may be helpful to some patients. Explain pain control measures to the patient. Remind him or her to notify the healthcare provider if pain is not relieved within a few days. If fissures do not respond to management within several days to weeks, surgical repair under a local anesthetic may be needed. Teach the patient to report any drainage or bleeding from the rectum to the healthcare provider. An anal fistula is an abnormal tract leading from the anal canal to the perianal skin. Most anal fistulas result from anal rectal abscesses, which are caused by obstruction of anal glands. Fistulas can also occur with Crohn's disease. The patient with an anal fistula has pruritus, purulent discharge, and tenderness or pain that worsens with bowel movements. Because fistulas do not heal spontaneously, surgery is necessary. To perform a fistulotomy, the surgeon opens the tissue over the tract and scrapes the base. The incision site then heals by secondary intention. After surgery, instruct the patient about sitz baths, analgesics, and the use of bulk producing agents or stool softeners to reduce pain. Giardia lamblia is a protozoal parasite that causes superficial invasion, destruction, and inflammation of the mucosa of the small intestine. This organism occurs in cysts and trophocytes. Trophocytes die rapidly after leaving the body in the stool, but cysts can remain alive in the right type of environment for weeks to months. Humans who eliminate cysts are infectious. Flies can spread the cysts, and the problem is more common in areas that use human excrement for fertilizer. Giardiasis is a well-recognized problem in international travelers, campers, and immunosuppressed patients. In the U.S., it is prevalent and is the most common parasitic infection. The disorder affects only the intestinal system, causing acute diarrhea,
chronic diarrhea or malabsorption syndrome. The acute phase usually is self-limited, lasting days or weeks. The chronic phase can last for years. Diarrhea is usually mild in both forms, but it can be severe. As stools increase in frequency, they become more watery, greasy, froth frothy, and mild odorous with mucus. Weight loss and weakness are common. Malabsorption can occur with diarrhea that continues for longer than three weeks. Manifestations result from malabsorption of fat, protein, and vitamin B12 and lactase deficiency. Humans are the only known host for E. histolytica. This organism also occurs in cysts and trophozoites. E. histolytica either feeds on bacteria in the intestine or invades and ulcerates the mucosa of the large intestine. The parasite can be limited to the GI tract or it can extend outside the intestines. Individuals can have intestinal ambibiasis without having any symptoms or symptoms can range from mild to severe. Cryptosporidium is manifested by diarrhea. This infection most commonly occurs most commonly in immunosuppressed patients, particularly with those with HIV. It can also occur in children and older adults from contaminated swimming pools. Chagas disease is caused by the Trypanosoma cruzi parasite, which is most commonly transmitted in impoverished areas of Latin America by the triatomin or kissing bug. Patients first develop an acute infection followed by an intermittent asymptomatic period and chronic infection. Patients with chronic Chagas disease often develop cardiac dysrhythmias or heart failure and colon or esophagus dilation causing impaired digestion and bowel elimination. An estimated 300,000 individuals in the U.S. have the disease, most in the southern areas of the U.S., which can be transmitted through blood transfusions and organ transplantations. A thorough history can help determine potential sources of exposure to parasitic infection. A history of travel to parts of the world where such infections are prevalent increases suspicion for infection with parasites. GI symptoms related to travel may be delayed as long as one to two weeks after return home. Immigrants may have the infection on entering the new country. A nutrition history is especially helpful if several people in a group become ill. Common water supplies or bodies of water may be infected with Giardia or Cryptosporidium. Trichinosis should be considered if the patient has eaten pork products. Mild to moderate E. histolytica infection causes the daily passage of several strong, foul-smelling stools, possibly with mucus but without blood, accompanied by abdominal cramping, flatulence, fatigue, and weight loss. The infected patient usually experiences remissions and recurrences. Severe amoebic dysentery is manifested by frequent more liquid and foul smelling stools with mucus and blood. Fever up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, tenismus, which is the feeling which is feeling the urge to defecate, and generalized abdominal tenderness and vomiting can also occur. The ulcerations of invading amoebiasis that occur in the colon can cause pain, bleeding, and obstruction. Ulcerations can also occur in the rectum, resulting in formed stools with blood. Complications are rare, but include appendicitis and bowel perforation. Extraintestinal amoebiasis can occur without symptoms of intestinal infect infection. The most common form is amoebic liver, liver abscess, which causes symptoms of fever, pain, and an enlarged liver. The abscess can rupture and death can result if the infection and complications are not treated. The diagnosis of amoebiasis is made by examining the stool for parasites. Because he histolytica is difficult to detect, serial stool examinations are needed if the disease is suspected. The diagnosis of G giardiasis is also confirmed by the presence of parasites in the stool. Because organisms may not be detected for at least one week after symptoms appear, multiple stool samples should be examined. Treatment for all types of amoebiasis involve the use of amoebicide drugs, or amoebicide drugs, metronidazole followed by a luminal agent such as paromomycin is commonly prescribed. The patient with severe amoebic dysentery 
requires IV fluid replacement and possibly opiate-like drugs such as diphenoxalate with atropine to control bowel motility. The patient with extraintestinal amoebiasis and severe dehydration, especially the older adult, is hospitalized. The patient with asymptomatic, mild, or moderate disease is treated with drug therapy on an ambulatory care basis. Therapy effectiveness is based on the examination of at least three stools at two to three day intervals starting two to four weeks after drug therapy has been completed. Teach the patients the importance of keeping their follow-up appointments and taking all drugs as prescribed. Treatment for giardiasis is drug therapy. Metronidazole is the drug of choice. Explain modes of transmission of parasitic infections and means to avoid the spread of infection and recurrent contact with parasitic organisms. Inform the patient that the infection can be transmitted to others until amoebicides effectively kill the parasites. Teach the patient to avoid contact with stool, keep toilet areas clean, wash hands meticulously with an, anti an, anti an antimicrobial soap after bowel movements, Maintain good personal hygiene by bathing and shower daily. Avoid stool from dogs and beavers. Advise the patient to avoid sexual practices that allow rectal contact until drug therapy is complete. All household and sexual partners should have stool examinations for parasites. If the water supply is sus suspected to, as the source, a sample is obtained and sent for analysis. Multiple infections are common in households, often as a result of contaminated water supply. Well water and water from areas with inadequate or no filtration equipment can be sources of contamination. Infection with cryptosporidium is usually self-limiting in adults who have normal immune function. Drug therapy for patients who are immunosuppressed may include paromomycin, an aminoglycoside antibiotic. Teach patients that this drug can cause dizziness. Now we'll review some uh, practice questions. Go ahead and pause the video to read the scenario, pick out your answer, and then resume the video to see if you're correct. For this first case study question, the correct answer is B, as in boy. For the second case study question, the correct answer is A. For the third case study answer, the correct answers are A, B, and C. For the fourth case study answer, the correct answer is D, as in dog. And for the final case study question, the correct answer is C. For question one, the correct answer is A. For question two, the correct answer is D. For question three, the correct answer is B, as in boy.